Have I got Mark here? Yes, Judge. And Adrian? Yes. Now, Mark, Adrian, it's very important that you don't interrupt each other and only speak through me. Understood? Yes, Judge. Splendid. Now, Adrian, what job do you do? I run a small mechanic shop. You run a small mechanic shop and also you sell cars from time to time through that shop, correct? Occasionally. Occasionally? Yeah. But yeah. you are a professional mechanic. How long have you done that for? About 20 years. Mark, this is a case that you've brought against Adrian. And it's a simple matter in this regard, that you bought a car from Adrian that you saw advertised and you took it away. And you bought it for a specific purpose, which I'm going to ask you about. And a few weeks later, as a result of what happened to the car, you ended up nearly in a serious accident. That's correct, yeah. Cut a long story short, you want your money back for the car. Very simple. Adrian, in reply, you say, absolutely not. You sold the car on the face of it. It was perfectly decent. It's not your fault. What's more, any problems with it, you identified to Mark. But more importantly than any of that, this was a car which you didn't sell to be used as a car. That's right, isn't it, Adrian? Yes. Mark, you needed a car. What was the... Why did you need a car? We what needed were you going the... to use it for? My son was born with a few difficulties. Great. And we needed the car for various appointments. Now, so you wanted a vehicle to be safe, right? Yeah. Reliable. Yes. It's terribly important. So you ended up finding a vehicle online, which was, Adrian, what was it? It was a Skoda Fabia. How much? £475. What was the age of this particular Skoda, Adrian? It was a 2002. Now, what were you advertising it for? I put it in the paper for £475 for parts. Now, I understand that you say you are not a used car salesman. In other words, that's not by any stretch of the imagination the primary purpose of your business at all, correct? Yes. It just happens that on this particular occasion, as you have in the past, you sold a second-hand car, yes. correct? So that's not the professional basis of what you do, it's just incidental to you having an extra car lying around in a mechanic shop. Yes. Understood. <coughs> there you are, you decided to advertise the vehicle. What, from memory, did you say in the advert? You must have said it was good because you wanted to sell it. I think, it's, I, think I said it had a, a long An engine. Tea. Good engine. It had, it, I had a receipt for £350 that quick fit fitted a clutch just a few months before. A clutch? But why hadn't you... You hadn't fitted no, it? No, I didn't fit it. No, I bought it with the, the, the new clutch in it. Had you ever driven it? Yes, I drove it around. It was fine. No problem as far as you're concerned? No. Now, I've got an MOT test certificate. Now, you conducted this of your own, on your own vehicle, and it does say that there are a number of issues, uh, although it parts, so there's a problem with suspension and various other things, correct? Yes. Oil leak. But nevertheless... You passed it, yes? Well, I didn't pass it myself. I took it to an MOT station. Well, that's what I'm asking about. Yes. Did it? Was it your it, garage that conducted the No, it the wasn't MOT? my garage, no. I have to ask you, so not, listen okay. carefully. Otherwise, you're not going to do yourself any favours. OK. Right? I said, did you conduct the MOT? The answer was yes. Did you conduct this MOT? No. You took it to an independent person? Yes. Excellent. That's good. Now, you saw this advert. What did it say, Adrian? It said, um... Skoda Fabia for sale, 12 months MOT. I think it said a new clutch fitted, 475. Now, 12 really? months MOT, clutch fitted. Well, I haven't got evidence of the clutch being fitted, but I accept that that happened. The clutch wasn't fitted by you, but by another company. Is that the car? That is the car, yes. Now, how much do you say it was worth? I'd say uh, normally sell for eight, eight fifty. That's based upon what? Your experience of selling vehicles or yes. what? Yes, yes. Did you go along and test drive it? No. Would you have let him take it on a test drive? I think I did the second time he came, yes. I couldn't the first time, it was tucked at the back. So what you're saying is true. You went back, did you? Yes, went and back. And test drove it? Yeah, well, yeah. No problems. Yeah. Paid you the money and you drove away. Now, this is where the dispute emerges. Adrian, what do you say you told Mark at the time the vehicle was sold? I told Mark that it needed some... It had some problems. One of the things was the, the uh, window not working, and I, gave, I handed him a, a new regulator or module. So the window and, doesn't work. Well, for £475, that might be a problem that you're prepared to overlook. Did he tell you about the window? He told me about the windows. Windows? What else did you tell him? 
agent. I said that he'd have to check it over and I'm selling it for parts at that price. In other words, you were saying, look, I don't want this car to be driven. This is really a car to be taken by somebody who's in the trade to sell it for some sort of profit for its bits. Yes. Is that what you were saying? Yes. Did there come a time, Adrian, and you'll answer me this honestly, that Mark in front of you talked about his family and talked about the fact that this was going to be a car that he wasn't going to break up but was going to be driving around in? No. He, he did say that he had a knowledge of working knowledge of cars and that's why he offered to do the window himself or windows. Why would he need to repair a window if he was taking a car, according to your claim, just for parts? You could have stripped it yourself and sold it for parts. You're a professional, why not? Well, I wanted to sell it for spares or repair, really, for that price. You drove it away. What happened, Mark? We can deal with this pretty quickly. Yes, um, I drove it away. Um, took the switch with me, which was meant to repair the windows. Fitted the switch. Nothing happened. The windows still didn't work. Um, we took a trip up to London a little while after. On the way back down, we heard a big bang and the car veered across the motorway nearly into the centre reservation. Um, Were you with your children? Yes, my child was in the car, Excuse yeah. me, your child. Um, lo I looked in my, in my wing mirror and could see a big lump of plastic in the, in the dual carriageway. So I pulled over into the next lay-by, looked under the car and realised that all the plastic under tray and both wheel arches had got caught up in the wheel. How far from home were you? We were 50 miles. And you, I think, slowly drove home after? But yes, yeah. But how frightening was that? Very. It made my heart jump out. I, you know, I'm quite strong. If I wasn't strong enough to hold that wheel, the, the car would have gone into the reservation. And if there was any car overtaking us at the time as well, it would have caused serious accident. Hearing that, Adrian, do you feel a little bit responsible? Well, no, I don't, actually, because I'm not a... I, as I said, I'm not a car dealer or, or I'm not a car salesman. If I was, then, of course, I would offer a guarantee and I might have a suit on and free coffee and a carpet. For more Judge Rinder cases, click here. And if you've got a legal issue yourself, get in touch with us by clicking over here.